I have tried to compress an entire boring book or 10 hours of lectures on finding the domain of a function into under 20 minutes. We will find the domain of different types of functions like polynomial, rational, radical, and functions involving fractions with radicals. In almost all of the domain problems, you only need to check the following two rules. First, we cannot divide by zero, because division by zero is undefined. This rule matters whenever a variable appears in the denominator. Second, we cannot take the square root of a negative number, because that is not defined in the real number system. In simple words, the domain of a function is all the possible values of x that you can put into a function f of x, such that it won't break any math rules. Polynomial functions. Polynomial functions are the easiest case. They do not have anything in the denominator, and they do not place anything under square roots. As a result, polynomial functions are defined for every real value of x. We write it as x belongs to r, where this r is all real numbers. In interval notation, this is written as x belongs to negative infinity to positive infinity. We can write it in either of these ways. Rational functions. Rational functions are different from polynomial functions because they contain variables in the denominator. For these functions to be defined, the denominator must not be zero. To find the domain, we look at the denominator, set it not equal to zero, and solve for x. Any value of x that makes the denominator zero must be excluded. For this function to be defined, set the denominator x minus 5 not equal to 0. Therefore, we get x not equals 5. So all real numbers are allowed except 5. To write the domain in the interval notation, first represent it on a number line. A number line helps to clearly visualize which numbers are included and excluded from the domain. This is shown by an open circle at 5 and then shading the left and right of 5. So, in interval notation, first write the left part as minus infinity to 5, and then write the right part as 5 to positive infinity, and put a union in between. Note that this curved bracket means the number 5 is not included in the domain. Sometimes you will also find a square bracket, which means the number next to it is included in the domain. Then again, note that parentheses are also used for negative and positive infinity because they do not represent a specific point on a number line. Now for this function to be defined, x squared minus 9 must not equal 0. Factoring this quadratic expression using the difference of squares formula gives x minus 3 times x plus 3. Then we set each factor not equal to 0. This shows that x cannot be equal to minus 3 and x cannot be equal to 3. Therefore, the domain of this function is all real numbers except minus 3 and 3. On a number line, these values are shown with open circles. Now, shade the number line from negative infinity to negative 3, then negative 3 to 3, and then from 3 to positive infinity. From this number line, the domain can be written as negative infinity to minus 3 union minus 3 to 3 union 3 to positive infinity. The parentheses around minus 3 and 3 indicate that both values are excluded. For the next function to be defined, x squared plus 16 must not equal 0. Notice that squaring any real number always gives a non-negative result. Then adding 16 to that squared value always produces a positive number. Therefore, this expression can never be zero. Since no real value of x makes the denominator zero, therefore the domain of this rational function is all real numbers. For this function to be defined, the trinomial must not be equal to zero. To solve this inequality, first factor the trinomial. Find two numbers that multiply to give 10 and add up to give negative 7. These numbers are minus 2 and minus 5, right? So when they are factored, 
the expression becomes x minus 2 times x minus 5. Now, set each factor not equal to 0. This shows that x cannot equal 2 and x cannot equal 5. Therefore, the domain of this rational function is all real numbers except 2 and 5. From this, the domain can be written in interval notation as negative infinity to 2 union 2 to 5 union 5 to positive infinity. Now let us move on to finding the domain of radical functions. Radical functions contain a variable under a radical or a root. They can have either an odd index or an even index. When the index is odd, the expression under the radical can be any real number. This is because taking an odd root of any real number always results in a real number. This means their domain is all real numbers. In the given examples, third function has an index of 3 which is odd, and therefore its domain is all real numbers. However, when a radical function has an even index, the expression under the radical must be greater than or equal to 0. So, to find the domain, set the expression under the radical greater than or equal to 0 and solve the inequality. Just a side note, if the index of the radical is not shown, it is assumed to be 2. This is an even number and is commonly known as the square root. For the first function to be defined, x minus 8 must be greater than or equal to 0. Solving this inequality shows that x is greater than or equal to 8. Therefore, the domain is all real numbers greater than or equal to 8. On a number line, mark a closed circle at 8. This indicates that 8 is also included. Then shade the line to the right to show all values greater than 8 are included. From this, the domain can be written in interval notation as 8 to positive infinity. As mentioned earlier, the square bracket around 8 indicates that 8 is included in the domain. Next up, we have this function. For this function to be defined, 12 minus 3x must be greater than or equal to 0. First, take this minus 3x on the right side to make it plus 3x. So 12 is greater than or equal to 3x. Next, divide both sides of the inequality by 3. We get 4 is greater than or equal to x. This means x is less than or equal to 4. Therefore, the domain is all real numbers less than or equal to 4. On a number line, mark a closed circle at 4. This indicates that 4 is also included. Then shade the line to the left to show all values less than 4 are included. From this, the domain can be written in interval notation as negative infinity to 4. Is this true? Let us put x as 5 here. We get 12 minus 3 times 5, which is 15. So 12 minus 15 is negative 3, which is less than 0. So this looks correct. The next example is more challenging and involves a quadratic inequality. For this function to be defined, the trinomial must be greater than or equal to 0. First, change the inequality into an equation and solve for x. Use the factoring method. Find two numbers that multiply to give minus 15 and add to give 2. These numbers are minus 3 and 5. So when they are factored, the expression becomes x minus 3 times x plus 5. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve. This gives x equals 3 or x equals minus 5. Draw a number line and plot these values. The number line is divided into three intervals, less than minus 5, between minus 5 and 3, and greater than 3, right? Now from each interval, choose a convenient test value to check the sign of the expression x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 5. Take a test value less than minus 5, for example, x equals minus 6. Substituting this into x minus 3 gives a negative value, and substituting it into x plus 5 also gives a negative value. Since the product of two negative values is positive, the expression is positive in this interval. Next, 
choose a test value between minus 5 and 3, such as x equals 0. Substituting 0 into x minus 3 gives a negative value, while substituting 0 into x plus 5 gives a positive value. The product of a negative and a positive value is negative, so the expression is negative in the middle interval. Now, choose a test value greater than 3. For example, x equals 4. Substituting 4 into x minus 3 gives a positive value, and substituting 4 into x plus 5 also gives a positive value. The product of two positive values is positive, so the expression is positive in the last interval. Also note that the expression becomes exactly 0 when x equals minus 5 or when x equals 3. Since the expression under the radical must be greater than or equal to 0, we include all intervals where the expression is positive or 0. Therefore, the domain consists of all real numbers less than or equal to minus 5, or greater than or equal to 3. The interval between minus 5 and 3 is excluded, because in that region, the expression is negative. And taking the square root of a negative number is not allowed in the real number system. The method we discussed is called the sign chart method. Finally, let us gear up our level and move on to finding the domain of functions involving fractions with radicals. These functions have a variable in the denominator and under a radical. We will consider cases where the radical appears in the numerator, the denominator, or both. We will also look at cases where the entire fraction is under a radical. When a radical appears in the numerator, the expression under the radical must be greater than or equal to zero. At the same time, the denominator must not equal zero. Solve both inequalities separately. This inequality gives x greater than or equal to minus seven. The other shows that x squared minus four cannot equal zero. So x is not equal to minus two or two. Plot both results on the same number line the first inequality gives all real numbers greater than or equal to minus 7. The second condition gives all real numbers except minus 2 and 2. Now, identify the intersection, which is the region where both are true simultaneously. This intersection region represents the domain of the function, so its domain is minus 7 to minus 2, union minus 2 to 2, union 2 to infinity. When a radical appears in the denominator, for the function to be defined, the expression under the radical must be greater than zero. Please note carefully that the condition is greater than zero and not greater than or equal to zero, because allowing zero would make the denominator equal to zero, which is not allowed. Now, solving this inequality, we find that x is greater than minus six. Therefore, the domain of this function is all real numbers greater than minus 6. When radicals appear both in the numerator and the denominator, for the function to be defined, the expression under the numerator radical must be greater than or equal to 0, and the expression under the denominator radical must be greater than 0. Solving the first inequality, we find that x is greater than or equal to minus 3. This quadratic inequality can be solved using the sign chart method as discussed earlier. But when the linear term in x is missing, as in this case, it can be solved more quickly using the absolute value inequality method. First, add 49 to both sides of the inequality. Then take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared becomes the absolute value of x and the square root of 49 is 7. For any algebraic expression, say u, and any positive real number a, if the absolute value of u is greater than a, then u is less than minus a, or u is greater than a. Similarly, this gives the result that x is less than minus 7, or x is greater than 7. Next, plot these results on the same number line. The first result includes all real numbers greater than or equal to minus 3. The second result includes all real numbers less than minus 7, 
or greater than 7. Now identify the intersection, which is the region where both inequalities are true at the same time. The only region that satisfies both conditions is where x is greater than 7. Therefore, the domain of this function is all real numbers greater than 7. Let us solve one final example. When the entire fraction is under a radical, for the function to be defined, the entire fraction must be greater than or equal to 0. To find the domain of the function, solve this inequality. This is basically a rational inequality and can be solved using the sign chart method. First, find the values of x that make the fraction 0 or undefined. The fraction is 0 when the numerator is 0, that is, when x minus 3 equals 0 or x equals 3. Then it is undefined when the denominator is 0, that is, when x plus 2 equals 0 or x equals minus 2. Next, plot these points on a number line. Notice that the number line is divided into three intervals. Then choose a test point from each interval. Let us use minus 3 for the first interval, 0 for the second interval, and 4 for the third interval. Substitute these test points into the fraction to determine whether it is positive or negative in each interval. For the first interval, substituting minus 3 gives minus 3 minus 3 which results in a negative number, and minus 3 plus 2 also results in a negative number. Dividing two negative numbers results in a positive number. Therefore, the fraction is positive in the first interval. For the second interval, substituting 0 gives a negative quotient, so the fraction is negative in this interval. For the third interval, substituting 4 gives a positive quotient so the fraction is positive in this interval. Additionally, the fraction equals 0 when x equals 3, but it is undefined when x equals minus 2. Our job is almost done. We need this expression to be greater than or equal to 0. So from this plot, the domain turns out to be minus infinity to minus 2, union 3 to infinity. Now if I get 15,000 likes on this video, then I will make another similar video to find the range of any function.